So welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success story series of interviews, where we discuss with local business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and challenges, and what's really driving them forward. So this afternoon, I'm delighted to have with us Gareth Turner, who's founder at Big Black Door. So Gareth, firstly, thank you for spending a bit of time with us. And if you'd like to introduce yourself, Big Black Door, what you do, how you help people, that would be wonderful. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. So I'm Gareth. Yes, we got that right to start with. So Gareth, founder of Big Black Door. And, uh, and we're a marketing consultancy. Um, and what I've got is 25 plus years, uh, I know it's hideous to think about it, 25 plus years of experience working at brands like Heineken, uh, Arla Foods, another Yorkshire business, and, yep. uh, and uh, Weetabix. I was head of marketing at Weetabix, marketing director at, at uh, Arla Foods. And what that gave me was stacks of training and experience and huge budgets. And now I bring all that, that experience and knowledge to um to scaling brands mainly fmcg mainly food and drink brands yep. to get them pointed in the right direction to help them establish their growth plans to uh, stop making rookie mistakes and get their marketing strategies sorted out i'm also lucky enough to work with some pretty big brands as well so that's the sort of the second group of people i i tend to help is these big international brands who just need a safe pair of hands I hope, wow. I hope that's a safe pair of to, to deliver that extra project that they uh, they perhaps don't have the time to do themselves. Oh, wow. Well. Are you allowed to name any name drop any current? I can drop, I, I, yeah, you know, you know, a, a marketeer likes to talk about themselves. But in, in the um, in the scaling brands, uh, Camp, I've got is a, a cereal business called Spoon Cereals. They're uh, incredibly uh, a great, a great granola. They've got going on loads of great MPD Brilliant. working with brands like um, Mary Hill Shopping Centre in the Midlands. Yep. Um, slightly larger brands, maybe uh, White and Mackay. I've done some work with the uh, whiskey business. Brilliant. Uh, I've done some work with uh, CNC, who are uh, the owners of the Magnus and Tenants brands uh, yes. up in Scotland. So yep. yeah, I've been uh, I've been very lucky with some of the brands uh, brands I've worked with. There's actually two years two years today, or two years sorry, two years this week rather that uh, I I jacked it all in to start this escapade. Well done, well done. It's uh... It's the um, Michael Gerber talks about the entrepreneurial seizure. Um, <laughs> it, 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 he says you stop working. They get it right. You stop working for an idiot. You start working for a lunatic. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, don't, okay, know right. that, I don't know that's relevant or not. Yeah. It, none, it, none taken, Chris. <laughs> I got that on the wrong way around actually once, and, that, um, <laughs> and the meeting was very short. Uh, <laughs> um, but but it is interesting, isn't it? Because it, it it is. I I find you know lots of people I work with. I, I start a business because they're good at what they do, but then realise that it, that business is more than that. It's about being good at running a business and what you do. And yeah. Those things that perhaps we could talk about today. What the yeah. the learnings were. So just going back all all those years when you when you were young, is this the sort of thing you saw yourself do, doing, Gareth, or did you have something else in mind? Of course not. <laughs> Sorry. Of course it wasn't. Um, I always be a footballer. I always be. Uh, I still. I still got my boots ready. If uh, if uh, if uh, Oliver Glasner, uh, the Crystal Palace manager, fancies giving me a call, I'm available. Really, uh, most of the days. Uh, but I can. Yeah, I make myself available. I, I, I realised pretty quickly, even at a young age, that I was nowhere near good enough to have any chance ever of being a football. I'm terrible at football. <laughs> uh, I always wanted, always fancy getting the getting the red and blue on. Or back in the day when I was when I was growing up, it was the white kit with the red and blue sash. They were the classics oh. with Vince Hilaire and uh, and some amazing players. Anyway, oh, um, yes, I remember. Yeah, that that uh, that was shortly. Uh, true. The truth is, the truth is, Chris, I I didn't really have career plans. Um, so I. When I left university, I went to university to do a subject that I thought I'd enjoy uh, in a city that I thought I'd like being in that I'd never been to. Yeah. So I went to study psychology in Liverpool, oh, in London, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any plans. So I left university. I started uh, work at um, at uh, Diageo, um, yeah. where I was. Well, it was actually Guinness Brewing back in the day when I was there. But um, I was in their customer service team. They moved into sales. And then I moved into sales at Heineken, and then I moved into as a sales director at Heineken for a period. Then I moved into uh, into marketing, where I perhaps felt like a round peg in a round hole in in a marketing role. But I right. sort of stumbled into different jobs, looking at things that I thought looked like fun and were interesting. So I'm probably not a, a great role model in in uh, in being in being planned out. And to be to be absolutely honest, that's led to some frustrations for me. I think in yes. over the years. 
but I've done all right. I've, yeah, despite that, I'm uh, I'm happy and I'm uh, I'm doing okay. No, brilliant. I, I I don't know if it helps or not helps, but mo most people I speak to say that they they didn't foresee this as mm. the future, and most didn't necessarily have a plan. But I've got people that are um you know that, that are running large um retail outlets that trained as lawyers so i've got you know it, mm. it, and and then you've got the other group there is a small group of people that are that, that i interview that um they say i didn't i never knew what sort of business it was going to be but i was always going to be in business which i find really interesting because it mm. is there is a a mindset and identity to running a business which i think is something that we yeah. we, we, we need benefits from developing because it it, it is a it is a challenging career to have being a business owner, and um, we, you, you are, we are only uh, top, not top four percent, four percent of the population, only four percent of the population own business, right. and it's because okay. uh, it is, it can be a hard gig, and uh, it's, yeah. it's what it is. And speaking of being a hard gig, what, what are since you, since you, you, you left, you, you founded the business, what are some of the biggest issues and challenges that you've had to overcome? Um. I mean, I think I've been, I think, okay, if I'm being self-deprecating, I, I, I think I've been lucky. I think I've, I've worked flip, flipping hard to, to be lucky, right? Um, but uh, I, there's, yeah, there's, um, so yeah, I think, uh, I'm not sure I've had too many massive issues. I, th I guess the, the biggest issue was um, earlier this year when, uh, yeah, and we, we've been growing, growing rapidly to a point where I couldn't, cope with the work on my own so I, I took on my first um, full-time em employee or first permanent employee I should say really? she's part-time but an employee yeah. um and yeah she's someone I've worked with over over years she's you know trusted with my life brilliant you know she comes with a with a price uh, as as all good people do so I made that commitment I then put a, a big chunk of money into a pension and uh and then I didn't win another client for for three months and it Got me a bit, a little bit twitchy. We we're okay. We had a buffer, right? So it wasn't, yep. it was never a, yeah, never a huge issue. I mean, it's perhaps something you might want to talk about in a bit, but yeah, I, 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 I had safety nets in place. Yeah, put safety nets in place before I made this leap because I, I have commitments, right? I've got a family yeah. and a mortgage. Yeah. So, um, those, those safety nets gave me some comfort, but. Um, yeah, I was, I was starting to get a little bit twitchy. At, yeah. You know, when sort of month three comes in, and then I, I bumped into someone who, and we, we were getting chances. It's like you know, to use a football analogy. Yeah, you know, we we were we were having chances. We just we just weren't scoring. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and then um, I bumped into somebody who's a, 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 a great guy, Howard Hessling. Uh, he's the new business director at um, at uh, McCann in Leeds. Right. Jumped on the bus on the way back from Central Leeds and back to where we live. And he said, "Don't worry, mate. It's gonna be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine." And the next day, we Brilliant. closed three deals. So he, Howard broke the curse. If anyone's got a problem with closing deals, go and see Howard, and uh, <laughs> give his head a rub, and then he'll that'll break the curse. <laughs> he'll he'll thank, make sure we send him this. He'll thank me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. We'll tag him in. That, that'll be <laughs> Please tag him in when, when, when we post this. Yeah, it's. It, I think one of the biggest challenges we're talking about that sort of identity of being a business owner is being able to see there's a, I think it's a Roger Kipling poem, isn't it? It's seeing success and failure as, as the impossible that they are. Um, yes, yes. Um, but then, sorry, to, just sorry to interrupt you there, but the, so, so it was, it was a bit tricky or a bit dicey at that. Yep. In that sort of three month period. But then I'm just closing my books on, on year two in the, in the, in the next week or so. And, I'd be, I went to look back at um, the percentage of revenue that by quarter in month is, is always going to fluctuate, yep. yeah, whether you're yep. at Weetabix or whether you're at Big Black Door, it's always going to fluctuate. Yep, absolutely. Look at the quarterly revenue split percentage and within two percentage points, the quarters have been exactly the same year on uh, for, for the first two years of my yep. business. Right. So despite that, the um, the position is still good. OK, so yep. what that taught me is that just to take a slightly longer term uh, view on things, you know, a quarter isn't that much longer than a month, but that suddenly looks a lot better um, than looking at things monthly. And to keep that, keep a, if I can keep a six month buffer in my in my business, then you know I'm going to be okay. Yes, yeah, very, very sound advice in general is to try and keep a buffer in there. But I, I think the challenge is, and, and this is the sort of unfortunate negative um, 
nature of most people's brains is that if we haven't won anything or if we lose a client, we tend to immediately have this view that everything's going to fail. It's like this is either either haven't won business or client leaves, it's going to fail. And yet yeah. when we get a new business, some new business or we don't assume everything's going to be amazing. Yes. And, yeah. and the challenge is, is just seeing those two things. It's neither going to be the idea that you will win 100% of every bid we ever do in the future is yeah. foolish. But so yeah. is that we won't win any of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, they're in the middle. Um, yeah, totally right. I, I, I'm a, yeah, a black or white character, right? I'm, I either think I'm a world beater or that I need to jack it all in. There's an, I'm not... I'm never really anywhere in the middle, although I try and eat, I try and even myself out a little bit and sort of yeah. become a shade of grey rather than this sort of black or white. But they're, they're, it, it's it's hard. It's it's hard to keep a relatively even keel, especially if you're on your own. Again, that's one of the, other, yeah. the softer benefits of employing someone yeah. who I absolutely respect as a peer. She keeps me on the straight and narrow. She she also yeah we didn't win that one, Gareth, but come on, mate, <laughs> Look, we're doing all right. So she just sort of uh, keeps me honest on stuff. Great. Yeah. Uh, uh, d- d- so a, f- a fear or a worry, whatever you want to call it, is a belief that's going to go wrong. It's a belief because we don't know. Um, and, and the best way to undermine a, a, an unhelpful de- belief is with evidence. Mm. And it's like, yeah, no, look, our conversion rate is 25%. So one in four. So we've, yeah. we've, we've, we've missed, we've, we've failed on three, may still fail on the next one, but, at some point, fairly soon, we're going to get one in. And it, it, sorry, sure. maybe sorry, Chris, but again, you touched on some stuff that um, that has been some light bulb moments for me in in relatively recently in my career. Yes. So, yeah, I I struggle with resilience. I've always struggled with resilience, right. uh, but it's only probably the last year or so at Weetabix where I I found some techniques to overcome that. So, you, you exactly what you've been talking about this idea of of evidence and I listened to a load of sports podcasts when I, I thought well I've got to fix this because it's it's hampering me it's you know I'm turning to I'm turning to mush in in board meetings when I'm when I'm questioned yeah I, I would the the, the 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 self-talk there was I would tell yeah. myself you need to jack this in mate you don't you know you're not cut out for this anymore but then the evidence is I'm I'm a marketing director sitting in a board meeting <laughs> right, that's the evidence and so I listened to some po- sports um uh, a podcast things and they talked about you know, Rafa uh, Nadal for example you know I'm, I'm going to slightly paraphrase and make this up a little bit here but in if in the first return of serve at Wimbledon he sticks it in the net it's also normal for him to think oh what am I doing here I, I need to get I need I need to give this up but he snaps himself out of it pretty quick he gets into his routine he adjusts his pants and the water bottles for 20 minutes and bounces the ball 100 times and he's back into a routine so I found my version of that which was to for marketeers to come back to the consumer. What is it a consumer would say to this? What's the consumer evidence that we've got on this? Great. And then back on, um, on on solid ground rather than getting myself into a spiral absolutely. of I need to jack this all in. I, I, absolutely. It, you know, the biggest challenge to most people in general, but it, and especially business owners, because it, it's quite an isolated um, mm-hmm. role, is that negative that negative self-talk and, and it's important that one of the other key ways to build resilience over time, Gareth is celebration, celebrating the win, because that starts to lock in the fact that uh, actually we are winning. Oh yeah. Okay. Cause we, we, we tend to be quit in general, pretty quick at starting to blame ourselves for the failures. Yeah. If we're going to do that, then we need to balance that with congratulating ourselves on the wins. What did we do? Well, and, and what was interesting, uh, we, we talk about sports, so we work quite, we, we've, as a business coaching organisation, we've taken most of our coaching um, knowledge and capability from sports because sports been at it a lot longer than, than business. And we work with a, a, a very well-known athletics coach, a guy called Frank Dick, who's been around for yeah. a very long time. He's worked with athletics. I think he's worked with um, British Cycling as well. And one thing he said a, lot, a while ago, and it's stuck with me ever since, was if something goes wrong, we naturally look at why, but the black box thinking of what can we do to fix it, not get it wrong next time. But he then said, but if we don't analyze why we won, then it is only luck or it can only, we can only put it down to luck, which means it has no value. So we need to go, what would we do? What? Do we do? Oh yeah. Well, we said that. Ah, oh, brilliant. So a, we're probably going to repeat the good stuff, but B we can sort of say that was us. Well done. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. But I think I think some of the, those podcasts I referred to, I think actually Frank Dick was a couple of those uh, as well. So yeah, he, it was it was very helpful. He might well be. I'll I'll, I'll take the opportunity for May to introduce you to our Biz X podcast, where we we interview sports people, business people, a mm. whole bunch of really interesting one, including um, Nick Price, the founder of Moonpeak.com. Okay. We, and and he, he was really interesting, and the really interesting stuff in that, Joris. But what, one thing he said, which was just obvious and genius, but until you think about it, he said, I, I think uh, James interviewer said, did you keep track of your competition? And he said, yeah, there was one one key competition that, that we had. And we realized that, that all their invoicing was sequential. So we bought basically bought a card every every month and knew exactly what their sales were. Yeah. For that month and it and it might be obvious and other people might do it but it was genius when you hear yeah, it. Love it. And so yeah absolutely brilliant so speaking of learning what 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 whether it's from the challenges or not what what would would you say you've learned most about growing a business um i guess that resilience right would be yes would be one to to look at a a bigger picture uh yeah. to to yeah you know, to zoom out a little bit from the the monthly stuff yes um uh there are there are a lot of a lot of smaller businesses don't don't like the idea of sort of process and yeah. uh, discipline uh and I, but I quite i do like that and so i brought the um you know man, i'm gonna call them management accounts but i, I do those myself right i i, I know yeah, really. pretty much what my what my run rate is i know yeah. what my uh, pipeline looks like i know what my conversion rate is i know really? what my average sales size is i know all this stuff is is using free resources i use i use um hubspot for that okay. um so i use that um the free version of hubspot to track yeah. all my deals all my all my key metrics so on a on a monthly basis you know in a with a team of of four of us i have a monthly business update and I, I, it forces me to do the metrics every month to share those with my team and to justify it to myself. So it, it helps me to keep myself accountable. And that's a, a discipline that, you know, I, I would have had a, a, a Weetabix and, and everywhere else. I would be talking, I now talk with my team about the, I don't know, we, we, our conversion rate is up, but we've got fewer leads coming in. Okay, well, how can we generate leads? What's the marketing plan to, for the marketing agency yep. to generate leads? So it, it, Bringing that discipline and processes, I think, has been um, been a big learning for you. It would have been very easy to go. Oh, thank God, I never need to do that again, and uh, and just forget about it. But I, I brilliant. I force myself to do that every week, every month. Sorry. It, it, brilliant. It's fascinating. It, it's one of the first parts of business mastery that we work with clients on because most businesses don't measure, don't monitor. And it's putting it in, and and it and if you do it from day one, it becomes it's so easy, yeah, and creates the habit. Having to retrofit it is, as you could probably imagine, quite quite a big challenge. So uh, yeah, so I, I track myself again. I set myself targets, arbitrary targets, right, to get to yeah. where I want to be in in a few years' time to be able to retire. So I know what I need to do on a annual basis. I need to hit a, number, a certain amount of revenue and that flows through to profit. But to hit that revenue. At my average deal rate, I need to close this number of deals. Well, to close that number of deals from that number of proposals, I need to make that number of proposals. And to get that number of proposals, I need to make that number of calls. Brilliant. So all of a sudden, then you're going, holy cow! I need that. That's an eye opener, right? When you do that, when you do that equation, that's that's hard work. They don't just they're not going to fall in your lap. No, no, and uh, 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 no, it's really interesting. Uh, but also, uh, and also that sort of you know, lead to cl to client conversion rate. The, so the outcome that one of the one of the simple sort of formulas is the output is the capability. Uh, sorry, the activity times capability. So if we want, you know, one client a, a ten to one ratio, we're going to make 10, 10 leads, ten calls. But yeah. the, the other thing we can control is capability. So building our capability. So what if that was one in two? All of a sudden, then you make two calls. So it, yeah. it, it's been, if we work on both, it, it's a yes. fundamental what we call the five ways. The five key areas to drive revenue and profit are lead number of leads, sales conversion rate, as you said, average sale because that can increase within yeah. a customer, number of transactions, get them to buy more often, and ultimately profitability, how efficient we are at delivering based on the the, the price we charge it. If you master monitor and master and work on those profit 
profits can soar really straightforwardly. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Um, so also, uh, you, you're probably aware we're a business coaching organisation. So I'm keen to know who the best coaches you've worked with, whether that's business, sport, life in general. Who's had the biggest influence on you? Um, it, it may surprise listeners to know that we get heads up on these uh, on these questions, right? And um, uh, given, given the rambling nature of my answers, then uh, it would surprise people. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I was thinking about this. I thought about this long and hard, right? And I, I don't think I've had that many uh, great coaches. I don't think, um, I don't think I, internally to businesses. I don't think I've had that many great ones. I can. There are two that I'm going to name. Right. The name check two. Who <laughs> are good? Sorry, by the way, I'm not going to name check two ones. Would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a bit harsh. <laughs> Two that I've, I've named. There's one um, is uh, is someone called Julie Smith, who uh, she's a, a leadership coach. She worked with us at at Weetabix. Uh, she's uh, recently written a boot a, a book, um, Coach Yourself Confident. It's a brilliant book. She's a brilliant coach. She's a, she's what I'd call a proper coach. Um, yeah. And to the point where I've, I've worked with her since. So we've done some work together, and she helps me, and she's going to help me again when I go into my annual planning when I, I do those numbers and things I've been talking about and what right. do I need to do each week to get to this thing what's my yep. you know, what's my, my manifestation for next year well she helps yep. me with, with that the, identifying the questions to ask myself really um, she's a proper coach I'd say there's an, the other person to name check is a guy called uh, Pete Burcombe who uh, has a company called Into the Zone he also worked with me at Weetabix yep he was um, like an, I'm gonna say he's more mentoring than coaching yep um, and so he showed me his his sort of um, uh, ways of working, his his machine that he uh, puts into place as a leadership um, yep. expert, and that that was a game changer for me. Uh, so he helped me with resilience as well. He he pointed out that I wasn't resilient, and uh, he he um, encouraged me to go and uh, look at a few things, uh, and he uh, he also got me to organise my time with my team better right so that, right. that suddenly freed up headspace and time for me to be better at my job so um i say those two people are a, a great pete stuff i i use daily right. the, the, so since since working with him my diary is is you know ninja level of uh, of organization brilliant brilliant and and uh, whether for them or for from others are there any favourite quotes or sayings that you catch yourself using regarding business or just success in general? Not, not theirs, but um, my as a few, as a few. I was asking, ask my team, um, what do I? Because I, I, I like, I like a good quote, I like a good saying. <laughs> and uh, I said, can you? And they, they struggle to narrow it down, to be honest. But um, I think the one that I use the most, and the one which um, I think relates a lot to the sort of people we work with is this idea of measure twice cut once yeah get your thinking straight uh, before you pile into execution so get your strategy straight and, and yeah surprise surprise i can help with that sort of stuff right yeah. um but i was at an event um last week a two-day event for startups so sort of food and drink startup scale-ups right and i spoke we spoke to over 100 people in those two days we had a stand there and i, I don't know I, I'm, I'm making the numbers up i'm gonna say half a dozen or so 10 people said oh we, we're doing a redesign of our packaging these are startups so one sub person said oh it's been six we, we, we started six months ago and we're going to redesign our packaging maybe you should look that right to start with and um and yes. the money you would have saved on one on a, a new pack design then i could have helped you get all that sorted out so people often see thinking and strategy as inertia and a waste of effort. They want to be piling into making that thing, making those TikToks, doing those things. Yeah, great, but you'd be better off getting your thinking straight first. And then everything you do after that is pulling in exactly the right direction and you won't waste a penny. Yeah, brilliant. It, 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 it's so critical, is it? It's that taking the step back. It's, it, it's not relating. Uh, we're brought up to believe in, in in many ways that success is about hard work and it is but it's not just about hard work and if you know there's no point having your head down working as hard as you can if you go in the wrong direction yeah yeah it's like exactly. stay set back every now and again head up what could it be what am i going the right way and, and mm. is there an easier way and often there is especially 
um you know technology shown us as different ways um just just ways of uh, of operating and learning from others yeah no i i, I... An example of that though chris is um yeah, the uh, uh the open right uh this week there would have been these are great golf these are world-class golfers that are playing here yeah they still have a caddy they still have a caddy going yeah what do you reckon to this line what do you reckon to this putt we go seven seven are you sure mate you need a you need a six iron there they the caddy isn't as good a golfer as them i'm yeah. gonna guess they still need a caddy and so yeah. what on earth makes people think they can just pile in and and when they when they perhaps aren't experts in certain things just pile in and make stuff happen and expect for success you every now and then you will roll a double six every now and then you will luck out oh 100 but... and that's the ex that's the expectation and and that can happen but no i mean it, it, it is a reason we typically don't work with startups too much not not because we don't want to or it's uh, but because I, I i always say it normally takes a couple of years to get the crap kicked out of you to mm. realize that perhaps there's some e better ways of doing things yeah. because yeah. the reason is and, and it actually is quite important that at that point of starting the business you've got to almost have absolute belief in your own capabilities and success otherwise you mm. probably wouldn't have started so it's almost like understanding we need different mindsets at different times um but yeah I and i think that's the case and it's just like single-mindedness is probably something right at the start but as you say that those that still doesn't stop us actually saying well my choice is to take a step back and plan and think yes uh, really key uh, uh, and gary what would you say you learned about yourself throughout your journey so far other than not being or going from not being as resilient to being more yeah resilient? i mean resilience is the is the thing i've learned i've learned that that needs to be worked at you know i've i'd say it's probably something about confidence there that to just have more confidence in in the stuff i've done there yes. I, um, there's a, a a great marketing community um that called the marketing meetup and uh, they've got events in leeds and, and other cities in the, in the north and uh, they have a community of i think forty thousand marketeers wow. Um, that they they do podcasts for it and webinars. And the founder of that, or the co-founder of that, is a guy called Joe Glover. And Joe and I met, um, and uh, yeah, he, he very kindly asked me to do one of the webinars. Uh, but Joe said to me, I, I said to Joe, I can't, oh, I can't believe I'm meeting Joe Glover. Like, you, like you're sort of famous. He goes, I can't believe I'm meeting Gareth Turner. And there's that moment they go, oh, we're just we're just normal blokes. <laughs> we're just we're all just normal blokes. And that yeah. just this eye opener to me that that. I should be confident in in the seat. Other people see that CV I've got as something to be proud of and um, yes. uh, it's something to be very proud of, right? And I am proud of it. But I see all the all the pain and tears that went on in the background, right? I don't, and but that's normal. That's not what other male sees. And so, so yeah, on the occasions when I've gone back through my CV to to dig out some information for somebody for a a a, 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 a proposal or something. He looked fluid. And go, oh, I, I did. All, I've done all right. <laughs> that was quite good. That was quite impressive. So brilliant. I just the learning is just um, yeah. I should, I uh, yeah, to remind myself that I've done good stuff and to be and to be yeah. confident. And I wish I'd, I wish I had that in me innately. And I wish I had that in me when I was younger because uh, that's not. I, I haven't always had that. I I don't know if it helps or not helps, but I don't think that many people do. Yeah. Yeah, and it's normal. It, it, it is very, very normal. I, and I mean, there was a, I heard a quote from Stephen Bartlett recently, which I really liked. It's not quite, but he took, he was talking about imposter syndrome. And, and he said, I love, he said he loved imposter syndrome because it meant he was in the right room and he was going to learn something. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it, you know there's a good thing about feeling that way in some ways, but, but yes. I, I, I do believe we should, you know, as simple as let's read our own marketing material. You know, if 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 we yeah. admit it, unless it's a pack of lies, it it's what we believe to be true. <laughs> Therefore, let's let's read it, read it, and believe it. Um, yeah, it isn't that easy, and and most people in most walks of life do have that concern about themselves, and you know, am I good enough? And then um, it, it sometimes you just got to give ourselves a break. I think and just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right, all brilliant, right. absolutely, absolutely, and. Um, Looking forward now, what 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 does the future look like for you guys, and what what challenges do you think you might face, if any? 
well, yeah, the wheels could come off at any moment. So uh, yeah, there's there's always that on the horizon. But but I just want to keep the momentum. We're we're doing well at the moment. I want to keep that keep that growth trajectory uh, in a similar way. But that that probably means taking on more people uh, in the next within the next twelve months. Really? So I guess the the challenge for me is to find someone who find another person I should say because I've got you know sort of a couple of permalancers and um and a uh, and a, 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 a an permanent employee yeah um who I've known and I I you know, I've known for years I, I, the challenge now is to find someone who's perhaps I don't know who's going to fit in so like a what I might call a proper recruitment yeah. right not not go to my black book yeah so yeah that will be a challenge for me to, yeah how are they going to fit into the business are they going to be good enough are they going to are they going to share my values and share the training, et cetera, that I've, the people I've brought in, we've, we've been, we've worked together in other companies, so we all know how each other works. Yeah. Yep. So that, that, that's going to be a challenge, but I, if I want to scale, I need to get over that pretty quickly. So yep. that's, yeah, the, 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 you know, the upside is that I've, I've recruited, you know, on other people's money many, many times. So I can, uh, I'll tap into that, that uh, mm-hmm. knowledge the experience but uh but it's it's always feels different when it's on your own business yeah yeah i, I mean interestingly enough I, I suggest the the answer to your challenge is in it was in your own words in and, and we 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 teach and work with people a, a slightly different philosophy on recruitment which is where most recruitment most people recruit on experience but sack on attitude it's like do, do you know what i mean it's like so yeah. our proposition is let's let's recruit on value on on attitude, on values, a values match, because we can always teach skills. Um, now, you might want a base level of experience, that's okay, but above that, let's go for the people that absolutely want to work with us and for us and do it our way, because that's the challenge. People with a poor attitude want to do it their way, so sometimes experience is actually the, the challenging thing. Well, I've always done it this way. Well, that's okay, but that's not okay here. Um, so it, it, it is it is an interesting one um, to to, to look at but values and attitude it's, if you if you work on that you've got a way better chance of recruiting the right people than uh, than just an experience if that if yeah that yeah we'll see we'll see what happens yeah absolutely a- absolutely and, and i'm keen to know what you'd say to anyone that's thinking of going into business right now gareth um i mean I, I'm, I'm not someone i think you said at the start that only four percent of people do this right so i'm not someone who just says oh yeah go for it you'll love it because I'm not sure it is for everyone, if I'm being yeah. honest. I think um, I think you need to think about what it is you want from a job. So for me, I wanted that variety and um, the chance to to do more different things. Uh, and I've I've traded a regular salary for that for that ability, right? So yep. it, that's what I wanted. That was most important to me. So I'd say to people who are thinking of it to do the maths. You know, work out what it is you need to be taking home to cover your bills. Right. How much have you got in your, in your bank? What um, what uh, you know, the, the, what your conversion rate might be from number of opportunities through to uh, through to um, through to conversions. I'd encourage people to think about their day rate and not not scrimp on it. I see a lot of a lot of people probably undervaluing what they, they they do at a day rate i'm not i'd also recommend people actually charge by the projects not day rate but um but right. ultimately it boils down to day rate when you're working it all out yourself yep um so yeah I'd, I'd i'd also say don't believe all the content you see on linkedin the curated content on LinkedIn. it's not all it's not all um great fun although i have a great time it's you know there are moments of worry there right as i have yep. described yeah described cool. earlier on um I'd also say, if you can, to to build up your safety net um, in advance. So, yeah, and by that I mean, so if you're jumping off a cliff, you know, the leap if the cliff is like this is is significant. If you can bring the ground up a bit or the cliff yeah. down, so that you, you're you're not making so much of a financial risk, taking so much of a financial risk. So, I'd say it takes it takes six months at least to build up your pipeline to a point where you're you've got that regular stream of of stuff coming in and so you know, how can you do that how could you do that in a way while still being true to your current employer but how could you do that in a way 
bring up the safety net as your as your uh, exiting a business, for example? How can you build up a buffer in in cash so that um, if that six months turns into seven or eight months, you're not you're not losing your house? These are all sort of practical pieces of advice I'd, I'd give people. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, it all makes sense. It, and it, get, it all sort of goes back to that idea of planning out, doesn't it? It's like, let, let's let start, you know, let's really get back and think about what we need financially, what we need, um, and what how big that buffer needs to be, because that, that may depend on your own personal income requirement, mm-hmm. but also the costs of... Because most, most, yeah, I think most businesses will typically be costing money for a period before they make money. So, and 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 it isn't a set amount of time. So it is about how long in this business is it likely to take to get traction enough to start to cover costs. So very, very, yeah, very sensible. And finally, goes, what would be the best advice you could give an 18-year-old you if you could go back in time and do so? Uh, I'd say just relax. Uh, yeah, I was a, I was very, um, I was worried a lot as a as a, a youngster about all sorts of things so i, I would tell myself just relax mate um it's really? going to be okay it's all really? going to be okay um enjoy yourself you know if you think about when you're 18 you're you're on the cusp of going to university i i would remind myself that my the friends you, you've made over the last seven or eight years are are the best friends you're ever going to have and yeah you know, i'm still very close friends with my my school friends they're uh, uh, well they've not been a constant so i would tell myself don't lose touch with your uh, your school friends because i i regret the period when i wasn't in touch with them i now but i'm back in touch with my school friends and uh, i regret that period so uh, i'll tell them not i'll tell gareth 18 year old gareth uh, to uh, to not lose touch with his best mates brilliant absolutely i've been lucky enough to keep some from from school and college and various other places so that's that's absolutely wonderful brilliant well Gareth, it's been really fascinating um to spend a bit of time with you. thank you so much for for talking to us and for anyone that's watching right now that'd like to get in touch with you or, or your business what would be the best way to do that uh i'm i'm fairly consistent on uh, linkedin so you can find me on linkedin gareth a turner uh, or via my website which is bigblackdoor.com you can uh, you can get in touch with us there. there's all sorts of exciting stuff on there wonderful wonderful well f- for now thanks so much it'd be great to swing by another six 12 months and just see <laughs> but, 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 but until then thank you so much thanks cheers chris